Good evening, everyone. The scene behind me is one that nightmares are made of, and that is extremely heartbreaking. So let me try to describe how we got to this point, uh, to now. A little after 4 p.m., our communications center starts receiving several 911 emergency calls here in the Summerfield subdivision in the Riverview area. One of the first ones we received was from a neighbor who said that there was a male who fled his house and he'd been shot several times. At the same time, we received a 911 call that there was a young black male who was running through the subdivision waving a firearm and at one point even putting the firearm up to his head. Deputies immediately respond on scene. They come into contact with this young male and immediately begin to de-escalate the situation. When I tell you that these deputies de-escalated this situation over a 16-minute negotiation, their negotiation, their de-escalation was textbook. Absolutely set the example on how de-escalation should exist. They were calm, they were collective, there was no yelling, and they established a, a rapport with, our, uh, with this young male who at least six times continued to put the firearm to his head, threatening to commit suicide. Now, when he put the firearm to his head, at the same time, as he changed his mind, he would lower the firearm. You see what I just did there as he's pointing the firearm? When I talk about these deputies and the extreme restraint that they used. They had the intuition to know that this young male wasn't trying to fire or, uh, uh, threaten them with the firearm or trying to shoot them. He was simply threatening suicide. So they continued to slow things down. At one point, they become successful. He places the firearm on the, on the ground. Not too long after that, there's, they continue to talk to him as they're trying to coax him to walk towards him he goes to reach to pick up the, the firearm. The deputies, again, using their training, using great restraint, use what we have in, in, in a less lethal option. Fortunately, the deputies here are equipped with a 40 millimeter launcher. It's a less, le less lethal tool. What it's meant to do is gain compliance once they feel pain that's caused from this projectile. This top part is fired towards a suspect. At over 40 yards, our deputy fires this projectile towards this young man, trying to gain compliance as he's reaching towards the ground. You can imagine the markmanship where he strikes this young man in the hand and then continues to the torso area. The male immediately comes up and realizes, hey, listen, I don't want to feel that again. They establish additional conversation with him, asking him to please don't reach again towards that firearm. We don't want to discharge this again. Worse yet, please, we don't want to shoot you. They start imploring him to put his hands in the air, walk towards them where they can place him into custody. Eventually, that's exactly what he does. He walks towards the deputies with his hands in the air, and he is placed into custody without incident. During this occurring, we were responding to the 911 call where the male was shot just a short distance behind me. Fire rescue is unable to get to this, this victim because it's an extremely active situation. So the deputies have to perform a rescue. These deputies put their lives in danger. They go inside the residence. They retrieve this male who had been shot, shot five times, shot in the lower torso, he is shot in the hands area and also in the face. It appears to us that he was trying to beg our suspect, who happens, we later find out, is the gentleman that we took into custody, this young male that we took into custody, putting his hands up in the air. Each of his hands has a projectile, projectile that traveled through it and then ultimately struck him in the face. We don't know if it was the same projectile or he is shot in the face with, a, with another round. But the deputies grab this individual, run him to fire rescue where they medevac him to Tampa General Hospital. He is in critical and sedated uh, condition. That's the latest update that I, that I have on him. 
Now, as the deputies are responding to this, this 911 call of an individual who's been shot, just a couple residents over, they realize that there's a female laying lifeless in the driveway just outside the garage area. They run to her to try to attempt and, and render aid, but quickly realize she has already succumbed to a, a gunshot wound. Now, while all of this is occurring, we come into contact with another family member in this residence. There's a brother who tells us that he hears his mother and her boyfriend arguing. He then hears several gunshots. He leaves his bedroom to see what's occurring and he sees his brother shoot his mom. One, maybe tw once, maybe twice. The brother then, or the brother, our suspect, then turns the firearm to his older brother, where the older brother, as you could imagine, fearing for his life, flees the, flees the residence. What we believe occurred is after he shot and killed his mom, he had already shot the boyfriend. He was then running through the neighborhood in pursuit to try to finish the job of the mother's boyfriend. This family's lives have been changed forever. They lost a mother. This mother's life is over. And our, when I tell you that this is one of nightmares, this is heartbreaking, our suspect is only 14 years of age. This 14-year-old young boy's life is over too. He will never see the outside of a detention facility. I want to take just a moment to make a plea for anyone out there that believes that they're a victim of domestic violence, for anyone out there that believes that they're facing a potential domestic violence. We have an absolute phenomenal resource here in the Tampa Bay area. The Spring of Tampa Bay will help you in every way imaginable. All you have to have is the courage to pick up the phone and say that violence will not no longer occur to me or my family. I encourage anybody, please, if you believe you're a victim or the potential is there, make that phone call. It will change your life. It will save your life. I also want to take a moment to commend the amazing work of these deputies that arrived on scene. From the life-saving measures to also the, the, the deputies who came into contact with this 14-year-old young boy. This less, less lethal option that they have on their tool belt, tool belt saved this young boy's life. These deputies who were at the scene encountered and had this 16-minute de-escalation dialogue with this young boy, these deputies saved this young boy's life. I'll try to answer any questions I can. Just please understand this is uh, extremely preliminary and unfolding as we're sitting here speaking. We don't know that at this point. Uh, we took the 14-year-old for medical attention just to make sure, not that there was anything life-threatening. Uh, he did uh, sustain, as you could imagine, some bruising where this less lethal round hit him. Um, he is fine. We're trying to work through that now. I don't know if we'll ever know. But I can tell you this. I can't ever imagine any dispute over anything being that important that you would murder your own mother. And this is the brother who's left behind. Is that the younger or older brother? The older brother is left behind. The only previous calls we have at this resident is one uh, in some type in regard to a stolen vehicle from here. Nothing other than that. Our 14-year-old suspect has no criminal history. Yeah, and when I go back to the 14-year-old boy, um, this is this is family violence at its worst. The projectile, yes is a 40 millimeter projectile. We used to just uh, uh, deploy it and purchase it for our specialty teams. 
Now we deploy it, and every year we purchase more of these less lethal options, whether it's a taser, whether it's this less lethal uh, launcher that launches this round, our bolo wrap, uh, uh, the shields. We continue to purchase more and more of these less lethal options for our deputies. This makes us much more productive. This makes us and helps us provide a higher degree of service when it comes to answering answering those calls for service. Whether it's a violent individual, a mentally unhealthy individual, it's such an important tool and resource to have any of these least le le less lethal options versus before the only option they would have is to go and rate the deadly force. And tonight it proved itself invaluable. don't know that yet. Uh, we know it's at least the older brother, our suspect, the 14-year-old brother, the boyfriend and the mom at this time. Not sure. We know there's other members of this family. Not sure who all lives in the residence. At this time, we're waiting on a search warrant. Once we have a search warrant, then we'll go in and continue to piece more uh, of the piece of this puzzle together to find out exactly what occurred here today. Great question. No, and I, I, I apologize for not mentioning the brother uh, certainly has a lot of emotional harm, but no physical harm this evening. He was not harmed in any way. You, you can imagine as this is unfolding, how traumatizing this is for this neighborhood here in Riverview. You can also imagine how traumatizing this was for all the deputies who responded here this evening as well. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Please be safe.